What's up everybody, this is Hemroid, aka Deep Fryer here, bringing you another Super String video. Today we're going to talk about the Alliance Co-op Mode. We're going to talk about the Trophies System, uh, Boosted Agents, and go over some general strategy. First, let's look at the Co-op Menu and talk about the different aspects of the Menu. First, you'll co come to Alliance. Uh, you do have to be part of an Alliance to participate in Co-op. And on the left-hand side of the screen, the bottom option is Co-op Campaign. You will click that, and you will be greeted with this box that tells you whether or not there is a campaign in progress. Um, each campaign is uh, four weeks, and each week uh, you're pitted against different bosses. So click on this box, and this is your Co-op menu. Uh, just to go over a few different things, the top left, it will tell you what campaign you are on. We are on Co-op Campaign 3. And below that, you will see your Alliance Trophies. Now the Trophies is what determines your overall Alliance ranking, as well as your weekly ranking. The overall ranking for the month-long campaign is separate from the weekly ranking, because there are different rewards for both. As you see here, first place for the whole season, is 3,000 Titan, second place is 2,500, so on and so forth. Now on the right hand side of the screen, as soon as this notification goes away, let's see. okay, uh, this is the rival ranking menu, and this tells you uh, which alliances you are pitted up against each week. Uh, every week you are uh, pitted against three other alliances that are similar in power and rank to your own, and you compete for trophies. And as you can see, uh, rank 1 for the week is going to receive 400 Titan, rank 2 receives 200 Titan, and rank 3 and 4 receives credits. So obviously you want to rank as highly as you can, both in the overall campaign and in the weekly uh, rival system. Now underneath the campaign on, a, on the left hand side of the screen, you will see reward crates. Each time you fight a boss, you don't even have to defeat the boss, just fighting the boss gives you four keys. If you happen to defeat the boss during your turn, you receive five keys. And what those keys are used for is opening these reward crates. You need ten keys to open a crate, and it will give you a random reward from this menu. And each time you open so many crates, your, uh, your crate rewards will level up so that you can receive better rewards. Now, let's talk about the bosses. Each week you're given three different bosses to fight, and those might be uh, any, any unit type, basically. This, it just so happens this week we have a tank class, a, an attack type, and a specialist type boss. You might have two tanks, you might have two specialists. Um, I don't know if there's any rhyme or reason to that, it seems ran random to me so far. But anyway, so let's um, click on the infected Slendier Spearman here. Now what's going on here is it's going to give you the boss info. It'll tell you monster skills, you can uh, click and hold, or if you're on a, a mobile device you can tap and hold on each skill and it will tell you what skills the boss has. Now what I want to draw your attention to is the upgraded agents. They receive an additional 30% attack power and hit points and the two upgraded agents for this boss are Kawuka and John Yonka. Now those upgraded agents are going to change each week. So, you just want to have a diverse roster to be able to field agents against these bosses. But, now here is what a lot of people may not be aware of. Even if you don't have these upgraded agents built up in your roster, they may be low level, um, you may not have any gear on them, which you can throw some gear on them uh, quickly just to bring them into a fight, but if they're uh, low level and the co-op boss is a higher level, they're probably only going to survive a turn or two. But, you may still want to do that and I'm going to tell you why. If you look under kill rewards, 
you will see that killing this boss gives your alliance, this is not, these trophies are not for individuals, they're not for you, they are for your whole alliance. That may be what some people are confused about. The kill reward is 330 trophies for your alliance. Now you will see a green digit after the kill reward trophies. This is where the bonus trophies come into play. Now, unfortunately, we don't. <laughs> my alliance doesn't have any bonus trophies uh, on this boss right now for me to really show you. Let me see if there are any. Uh, okay, here's an example. You see the green plus 33 under kill rewards. That means that alliance members have brought these upgraded agents to the fight, and when you fight the boss with upgraded agents, it will put bonus trophies in these kill rewards. And each time a person comes and fights the boss, if they bring uh, upgraded agents, this bonus number will keep going up every time an Alliance member fights the boss with these upgraded agents. So you want to bring as many upgraded agents as possible into the fight to put Alliance trophies in this reserve so that when the boss dies, your Alliance receives all of these bonus trophies. You only receive the kill rewards when the boss is killed. And if you look under tip here on the co-op menu, which I'm not going to read this whole thing to you, but page 8 is where it talks about this. Alliance trophies can be earned by defeating bosses. Each boss will display the amount of Alliance trophies it will drop, and using an upgraded agent to battle the boss will increase the amount of Alliance trophies dropped. So that is why you want to bring the upgraded agents whenever possible. Now, that is basically it. Um, now you understand what affects your ranking, how to get additional trophies. So let's actually fight a boss. I want to show you one of my favorite strategies for going up against the tank class boss, which I have to purchase my... Um, oh yes, and every day you can purchase an additional ticket to fight the boss, bosses. So you'll come up to the top of the screen, you'll hit this plus arrow, you use the uh, Alliance coins from from donating to the Alliance, it's the same coins you use in the Alliance shop, you, it costs 50 coins, and you can purchase yourself an extra co-op license to fight the bosses. Now you can buy an extra ticket every single day for a total of three fights per day. Now also, what I want to point out, even on the weekend, on Sunday and Monday, when there are no bosses available to, to fight because you get two days off, you can still come to this screen and buy your extra ticket each day on Sunday and Monday so that you can start off Tuesday with five uh, tickets for fighting bosses. And I'll tell you how that works. Sunday, it will say two of two tickets. You buy an extra ticket, that brings you to three. Monday, you come to this screen, buy an extra ticket also, that brings you to four. And then Tuesday, when the bosses are available again, you buy your extra ticket on Tuesday. So that brings you to a total of five tickets to five bosses. Um, so that's a little tip on how to optimize the amount of trophies you're able to earn for your alliance. Hey everybody, this is Hemorrhoid from the Future, doing a whole Back to the Future thing. Um, I messed up last week, I forgot that I had already used a couple of agents that I wanted to take uh, against that tank class boss. I wanted to show you guys one of my favorite strategies for fighting the uh, tank class co-op bosses. Um, but anyway, I had to postpone, so I'll have to do that in a separate video because there are no tank class bosses this week. But I'll make you guys a video for that in the future. Anyway, uh, instead we're going to fight the infected demon clown. Now I want to draw your attention to the hint button. You always want to click this hint button before you build your team because it's going to tell you what the boss's weakness is. Now this boss's weakness is debuff chance down, and when you apply this debuff to the boss, it will, uh, it will quite exponentially increase your damage numbers on the boss. So um, it's recommending one high and Osijong. Now Osijong is a little bit more reliable um, with hitting with that debuff, 
than Juan Hayo, so that's what I'm going with. And the team that I'm working with here is Osa Jong for the, uh, the debuff. I'm going to try to keep Kira alive, and uh, I'll use Kawuka's uh, shield to keep Kira alive until she can go immortal, you know, twice, hopefully. And I might even put a heal on her with, uh, with Hong Gildong. Um, but I'm also going to bring Yun Bitnara, I suppose. Or Bitnara, I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce. Anyway, um, because she makes herself immune uh, to, to debuffs while she is in her blackout mode. So anyway, um, now, my objective by bringing Hong, I have a lot of speed on her, and I'm really, really crossing my fingers, hoping that, um, she can go first, because I don't want to be stunned, uh, by this, uh, clown boss, but it might be a mistake, but I'm gonna try it. I haven't tried it yet, so I'm just gonna give it a shot. I'd say he'll probably still outspeed me because he's a co-op boss. He probably has crazy stats. Um, but let's just see what happens. At least I can do the uh, debuff block, you know, next time. Oh, perfect. Tong is going first. That's what I wanted to see. Watch this. Yeah, clown. What now, clown? You're not going to stun me for at least two turns. Sorry about your luck. Or sleep, stun, whatever. All right, so... Um, I want to actually hold off to put this debuff chance down on the boss until Kira is already immortal because I want to maximize that damage. So, Kira is going immortal. You have to be very careful when you use Kira uh, in these co-op boss fights because some of the bosses, uh, like the, uh, the blowfish, um, the spiked fish, does damage to you as you attack. So if you let Kira's Im immortality fall off and you're forced to do a regular attack while Kira is not immortal, uh, you can easily kill yourself. So, and that is no fun, I've done it before. Anyway, so here's Kira's first attack. Very good. And let's... See if we can get some resources for Hong to make uh, Kira invulnerable. We're gonna go with Osa Jong's uh, ultimate. Okay, another attack from Hong. Okay, now we have to be very careful here. Uh, Kira, after she does this attack, her immortality is going to fall off. So what we're going to do to mitigate that uh, is instead of Hong, instead of using, let's see, instead of using Hong's um, shield, I think I'm gonna, well, whoops, I meant to put that heal on Kira, oh well, it doesn't matter, Kira's gonna go immortal again in a minute. I'm gonna sh uh, use Kawuka's shield on Kira because it is two turns, and that should allow me to become immortal with Kira again. Yes, this is going very well. Very, very well. Let's see. I guess I'm just going to get some more. Keep on getting those resources. I won't use all of them, but uh, why not? It's a little bit more damage than the boss anyway. Okay, put Kawuka and Osijong to sleep. Let's just, let's just keep doing this. Let's just keep on. Keep on keeping on. Now you want to be very careful. Um, let's see, I want to wake Kawuka up as soon as possible, so I'm going to increase Kawuka's turn meter. Um, you want to be careful about doing that increased turn meter move with Kira, because um, if Unibit Mira does that move, then and then Kira uses the immortality move, they both drop to one hit point. And then if someone kills Unibit Nara, Kira also dies, uh, even though um, Kira technically has an immortality buff, but she's linked to you, Bitnara, so you want to be very, very careful about that. Okay, so here comes some more damage. We're putting that debuff on the boss, and let's, let's, let's make him hurt. Um, I am so glad to see that I can outspeed this clown with Hong, because this clown has been 
the bane of, of many, <laughs> many a co-op participant's existence due to the sleeps and, and, you know, stuns and whatnot. But, I'm very, very pleased, very pleased that I can outspeed and use the uh, debuff block. Use Hong's debuff block. Okay. Alright. A little bit more damage from Kaluka before we say goodbye. And a lot more damage from Kira before we say goodbye. I wish I could have seen over a million there, but I didn't have enough uh, debuffs on the boss and no attack bonus for Kira or anything like that. But anyway. So there we have it. Um, there is a boss fight. So just make sure you check those hints because it is absolutely critical to put uh, the whatever the boss's weakness is, you want to use that debuff uh, to your advantage. And uh, just as a side note, I am aware that I did not take any boosted agents into that fight, but uh, I don't have any of those, either, either of those boosted agents uh, built up very strong, so I will take them in the next fight. I wanted to just have one fight where I could just focus on DPS. And here's a, here's a great opportunity to show you these reward crates, because I have enough keys. I have 11 keys, and remember I said it takes 10 to open one, so you're just going to click on the reward crate and hit open. And we got some arms cores, that's fine, I can use them as, uh, you know, material to upgrade uh, some of my EX cores. Um, but anyway, let's uh, let's go back to the uh, what, I, what I filmed last week and wrap this up. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope I hope you're having a, a great day. Now, back to uh, back to the hemorrhoid from the past. Well, there you have it. That is the Super String Alliance Co-op mode, and how to gain additional trophies to help your alliance achieve a higher ranking, and how to participate in a boss battle, and how to receive the rewards. I hope you found this video helpful and insightful. Uh, of course, like and subscribe if you want to see more Superstream gaming content. Uh, but for now, this is Hemorrhoid signing off. I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and we'll catch you next time. Love Tornado! Love tornado.